Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery, and this time around, I want to talk about the new 3.0 firmware for the Nikon Z6 and Z7. When this firmware came out, I made sure I grabbed it, I put it on both my Z6 and Z7, I played with it a little bit at home, but then I came down to Florida because I wanted to try it in the real world. So rather than just doing something in my backyard or looking at animals on a computer screen to see if it works, which by the way, that's a terrible way to do it. You can get a lot of false positives there. It looks like it is working, and then when you try that animal in the field, it does not. So there's a lot of reasons to be out in the field actually testing this stuff. So that's what I've done. I've been down here in Florida. I've been testing it with real world subjects for the last week or so. And I want to give you the results that I have for three areas actually. The first is animal IAF. The second is I want to talk about the new tracking system, at least the better implementation of it. And as far as how well the tracking system's working, well, we'll have to get to that one too. And finally, I do want to discuss the overall state of the autofocus system in the Z cameras as it stands at this 3.0 firmware update because it has improved. I do want to talk about that. But before we begin, I do want to remind everybody that I'm coming at this from the perspective of a wildlife photographer. I'm not coming at it as a sports photographer or a portrait photographer or anything like that. I am testing this with actual wildlife subjects. And that's important because what works for me or doesn't work for me may not apply to you. So I just want to be 100% clear on that. First, let's start with animal IAF. I think the first step here is just to show you how to set that up. So again, you need version 3.0 firmware. So let's jump to the camera and let me show you how that works. All right, to set up animal IAF, just press the menu button and go to the custom setting menu and it's going to be under autofocus and once again you need firmware 3.0 in order to do this. If you don't have firmware 3.0 make sure you check out my video on updating your Nikon firmware. I'll put a card for that above. But anyhow go ahead and hit autofocus. Go down to auto area AF face slash eye detection and give that a click and just make sure that animal detection is the one that's selected from that menu. Once it is just hit the OK button and you have your menu settings all set and you're ready to go for animal IAF. The next step is to make sure that you're in the auto AF area. This only works in auto area AF. So go back to regular camera mode and just give your shutter release a half press. That'll do it. And then hit the I button and you'll get this little menu here. And what you're looking for is the AF area mode option. Now I've changed this around so there's a good chance that your AF area mode may be someplace else on this menu here. So just make sure you kind of go through once you find the one that says AF area mode. Go ahead and give that a click and make sure you select auto area AF like so and that's all you have to do. Animal eye detect is now ready to go on your camera. Okay, now as you notice when we were setting that up, it did say there was a little note there that said it was for dogs and cats and I thought maybe it would also work for other animals. I know a lot of people have had that thought as well. So we'll talk about that in a moment, but first let's talk about cats because I do have cats. So I decided to test it at home before I left. Now what I found was that the results were a little mixed with my orange cat, Gizmo, no problem at all. He has nice, easy to spot eyes. He's got a light colored face. It caught on really, really, really fast that it was a cat. No problems at all. In fact, I was totally impressed with it, with Gizmo. However, my other cat, my black cat, not so much. It did struggle quite a bit with her eyes. I mean, I think part of it is her face structure is black and the camera just really couldn't pick up that it was actually looking at a cat. But it definitely had a much more difficult time. And the problem is when IAF doesn't work, it reverts to auto area AF, which can sometimes be a little unpredictable, especially with a low contrast and dark subject like that cat was. So I did have some mixed results there. My recommendation as of right now for pets and animals and things like that that this was designed for is probably if you have a darker colored animal like a black animal or a very dark gray, it may not work as well as you expect. However, it seems like for lighter colored animals, no problem. Lighter colored pets, no problem, dogs and cats. Now what about for wildlife? Well, we came down to Florida and we have been doing wildlife for the last week or so with the Z7 and I've tried it on every animal I've encountered. And I can tell you straight away, it doesn't work real well on birds at all. I tried it on everything you can think of down here, wading birds and shorebirds and songbirds and you name it, 
doesn't work on any of them. It never sees the eye. I tried it on mammals too. Armadillos are a no, squirrels are a no. It did, however, have a limited amount of success with a raccoon, and I think that's because their face is very similar to that of a cat. So it did find the eye on the raccoon. However, a word of caution here. I did notice that when the raccoon was very active, it had a very difficult time staying on the eye and would often revert back to auto area AF, which would cause the camera to like focus on backgrounds and focus on foregrounds and things like that. So, in my estimation, don't use it for wildlife. It just isn't good enough yet to really be used with wildlife. Now, if you have pets that you want to use it with, it can be effective there, especially if it's a lighter colored face and it's a very distinctive face. It can work really well with that. But for wildlife subject, we just haven't had any luck with it at all. And like I say, the only thing that I was able to find down here, but all the subjects I've shot was that raccoon and it just didn't work out really all that well because there's that little bit of hesitation there. And if you're trying to get the shot, you're going to miss it. And I think you're better off just using one of the regular AF modes right now for wildlife in the Z7. Next, let's talk tracking because the new tracking system in here is so much easier to use than the old one. The old one, you had an OK button you had to push and it was very awkward. It never really worked quite as easily as it should have. And Nikon has made some really nice improvements. Let me show you how to set that up right now. Okay, so let me show you how I have tracking set up here, and it works really, really well because Nikon added a cool new menu option for us that allows us to initiate tracking from our FN1 or FN2 button. So let me show you how that works. I'm gonna hit menu. I'm gonna go to the custom setting menu again. This time I'm gonna go down to controls. And what you're looking for is custom control assignment. Give that a click. And the way I have this set right now is my FN1 button is set to subject tracking and FN2 is for my focus mode AF area mode. So let me show you how to set that up. So the first thing you need to do is go to the FN1 button and find subject tracking. You'll probably have something else selected by default there, of course, because this is a new feature. So you'll have to go down and find it. But this is under the press options, just the normal press option, as you can see at the top of this menu. So just scroll down and find the subject tracking tracking option, make sure that's selected, and that's going to be on the FN1 button. Now the next one I have is the FN2 button, and I have that set, just for my convenience, to focus mode slash AF area mode. Now this is not a press, this is a press and turn. If you notice it says press and command dials right there in the center of the screen, and that's where you're going to find the focus mode slash AF area mode option is going to be under that section of the menu. And the reason I like to do it like this is that if I don't want to be in auto area AF, so maybe I'm in tracking mode, I find it's not working real well for whatever reason, I can quickly just press my FN2 button in the front of the camera, and then I can jump to a different AF area mode by just turning the command dial. So I'm gonna set that, and that's basically how I have it set up. That's all you need to do. Let me show you how to use it. I'm gonna hit menu and get back out of this. Okay, so we're looking at this fence post here, and we're in the auto AF area. All I'm gonna do is press the FN1 button with my finger, and you'll see a little white box show up. That is the tracking box. Right now it's not active. As you can see, I go back and forth, it does not do anything. In order to activate it, we need to initiate autofocus. For me, that's gonna be pressing my AF on button, but if you're using shutter release AF, you'll need to give that a half press. Whichever way you do it, doesn't make any difference. It will initiate tracking, and as you can see, when I press my AF on button, the box is turned yellow. If I go back and forth, the tracking stays with that little post right there. Now, if I'm done tracking, I just stop focusing, and it'll go back to the white box. And if I'm done tracking altogether, I wanna get completely out of tracking mode, I press the FN1 button one more time, and I'm back to the normal auto area AF. So, pretty straightforward. I also have the FN2 button set, so I can press that, and if you notice at the top of the screen, it says AFC, and next to it, we see the little auto area AF symbol. If I rotate the front command dial, I can then quickly jump out of that and go to my other autofocus areas. So very, very handy, and that's pretty much it. Pretty easy to use. Okay, so we're all set up. Now let's talk about how it actually works in the field. I've been using this as much as I could, and I have to say, I have had some pretty mixed results with it. When I'm using ground-based subjects. If I have a ground-based subject like a bird running along the shoreline or even a reddish egret hopping around trying to catch fish, even with a bunch of other birds around, when it's a ground-based bird, it seems like it works pretty well. I didn't have much problem at all with it, and for the most part, it would stay locked on, you know, reasonably well, as much as, as well as you would expect anyhow. However, when it comes to flight shots, it's a little bit different story, so let's talk about that. So the first thing I want to talk about is initial locks. And honestly, this kind of applies even for non-flight shots because I had quite a 
problem getting initial locks with the tracking mode that honestly aren't there with the regular AF modes in the Zs right now. So I'm not sure what's going on. So for instance, let me show you this video clip of this laughing gull. It's sitting on the beach, it's preening, and it has a black head and a whitish gray body. It's got a lot of contrast there. And as you can see, the camera just struggles and struggles and struggles to get that initial lock. The bird's not really even moving that much. So that's not real impressive. Eventually I was able to get it to work, but still, that's not real good. In the air was just as bad. So many times I'd have a bird just up against the sky and that first initial lock in tracking mode was very, very difficult. Was it impossible? Absolutely not. I absolutely was able to lock on in a lot of cases and track the bird and it was fine. However, the initial lock was not nearly as good as what I get with my normal DSLRs. And honestly, I would really hesitate to use it for flight shots for that reason, because that initial lock is so important. If it takes forever to get the initial lock or you can't get it at all, you're never gonna get the shot. So the initial lock on was kind of a, kind of a big issue. The other problem I had with it was the same problem I have with like Nikon 3D AF. And that is if I have a subject that's kind of similarly colored to the background and it has a similar tonalities and things like that, similar brightness, levels, often the tracking mode would jump from the subject and jump to the background. This happened not just once, but over and over and over. And sometimes it would jump from the subject itself and try to jump to the sky. It just was very, very frustrating. Now that's not to say it didn't work. There were certainly instances where I could track the bird and get the shot. But the issue is between the initial lock problem and staying on the subject, I would lose at least half of the opportunities that came my way. And that is very, very frustrating. So. Would I use tracking for flight shots? Probably not. However, there are things that I would use it for. The first is, again, ground-based subjects that are running around or moving around. It seemed to work really well for that. Another nice thing with tracking is even if you have a static subject that's kind of moving its head around, it's nice to lock onto the head with the tracking mode, especially if the head is distinctive, and it will go ahead and stay on that head as you're recomposing your shot. So it's kind of a nice compositional tool. You can lock on and then create the shot that you want, and the autofocus will just move around to the appropriate spot or stay on the appropriate spot as you recompose. So I do like it for that as well. So overall, again, mixed results with the tracking mode, but I do applaud Nikon for going in the right direction with this because it is much, much better to use and much, much better to implement when you do want to use it. Finally, let's talk about the state of the AF system as it stands now with firmware 3.0 in the Z6 and Z7. So is it better? I'm gonna say absolutely, 100% yes. I'm actually starting to be impressed sometimes with it, which is something I was never saying when I had version 1.0 or 2.0 firmware even. So it is better. I have noticed improvements in it and it is a little bit more capable for wildlife. I'm not gonna tell you that it's a DSLR level yet because it just isn't. When I put this up against a D850 or a D5, a D500 or even the D780, it's just not as consistent and it's not as fast to get initial locks and things like that. So it is lagging behind there. Of course, you do have some advantages with it. You have the smaller, lighter body. I mean, this is a wonderful little kit to carry. And you have exposure information. You can put your autofocus area anywhere in the viewfinder. So you have to kind of look at do the disadvantages of mirrorless and the disadvantages of the AF system not being quite up to par for DSLRs or quite up to the DSLR level. Is that outweighed by the fact that you can move the autofocus point anywhere on the screen there. So you have to kind of look at it both ways. But I do have to say that I am impressed that Nikon is taking you know, charge of this and trying to improve the autofocus system with each and every you know, iteration of the firmware. So, so far it is better. And would I use it for wildlife? I do use it for wildlife now, but I usually only use it if I'm pretty sure I'm gonna only encounter slower or static subjects. I still am not like loving it for action yet, but I do have to say that the regular AF modes seem to do much better for birds in flight than that tracking mode did. And I do wanna point that out. When I was in tracking mode, a lot of times, as I said, I was having difficulty. So just out of desperation one evening, I said, let me just go back to one of the regular ones. I tried some of the wide areas, I tried dynamic, I tried auto, and to my surprise, again, not DSLR level, but way better. And actually, I found it better than tracking mode too. So my opinion is if you wanna use this for action, stick with one of the regular AF modes and kind of avoid the tracking mode. So anyway, that's my opinion on the new 3.0 firmware for the Nikon Z6 and 7. Again, keep in mind, this is from the perspective of a wildlife photographer. You might find that that tracking mode works absolutely wonderfully well for sports or for kids or things like that. For what I'm using it for, for instance, not so much. So again, keep in mind, again, from this perspective of a wildlife photographer. 
So anyhow, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you stop at the site. I have all sorts of cool products right now. I have a brand new Lightroom tutorial that shows you all about the library module. And of course, I have my exposure book, my autofocus book, the wildlife book. Make sure you stop by. Lots of great stuff over there. Tons of information. And as always, remember to sign up for my free email newsletter at my site so you never miss a video, a blog post, or a workshop opportunity. And I would love it if you would like, subscribe, and get notified so you never miss one of my videos here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.